Hello, everybody. We're back for another episode of Taking Care of Business. My name is Mike Katz. I'm the Executive Vice President of T-Mobile for Business. And today, I am really thrilled to be joined by Jim Tugas, who is the CEO of HomeMD House Call Services. Now, HomeMD House Call Services is a small business. They're based in Howell, Michigan, and they deliver in-house clinical services to more than 1,300 elderly patients who are either homebound or in assisted living. So Jim, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, the first place I wanted to go is obviously with what's going on with COVID right now, uh, everybody knows how disproportionately impacted elderly have been. Um, sure. how, has, how has your business changed uh, post COVID uh, with the impacts that I'm sure your patient groups had with, with this horrible disease? How hasn't it changed? <laughs> um, <laughs> It, uh, I mean, it really everything, everything we do, you know, has, has really changed. Um, you know, we've, we've gone a significant amount towards being telephonic now. Now that we're able to do that, Medicare lifted restrictions on that um, in light of the COVID crisis. So um, we've deployed tablets out to uh, about, a, I think we've got about, a, about four or 500 of them out in the field right now. And we've got another five or 600 of them that we're working on. I'm currently surrounded by tablets all over my office right now. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, so we're, uh, we're getting those out to our patients because, um, because the elderly, you know, they, they, they have a difficult time managing their iPhone or their Android phone or their tablet if, if they should have one, and most of them don't. So we need to be able to, uh, to kind of um, uh, reduce the, the complicated nature of these devices for them. So we're able to kind of scrap almost everything other than the software that we need. We put those on the tablets and then we send them out. And then we don't have to worry about things like Wi-Fi connectivity and things along those lines because we've got the T-Mobile network backing the whole thing. So um, um, it really, it kind of streamlines the whole, the whole thing. We know that when we send a device out to them, we're going to be connected. Um, it allows them to be able to reach us Really, you know, it used to take us two, three, four days sometimes to get into a patient's home if they were having a medical problem, uh, you know, to get them the medications they need or whatever it might be to resolve that problem. And, and now we're able to get in there, you know, within literally within minutes. Um, and, and these elderly folks, you know, they, they're, not, they're not like you and I where, where, you know, we have a problem and we can sit on it and wait a couple of days. Within a couple of days, they may be in the ICU. So, um, so it's imperative that we get these things cracking and get it going very quickly. And we're able to do that um, with all these tablets that we have out there. Um, so that's been one way that it's, that's been the primary way that things have really changed. Um, we're no longer, because we do so many assisted livings, um, we're in about 80 or 90 assisted livings throughout the state of Michigan. We're, most of these assisted livings locked down um, a few months ago to where they don't want any medical providers or anybody else in their buildings. Um, you know, every time somebody walks in their building, they're risking exposure. And all it takes is one of their residents or one of their workers to be exposed to, to catch co the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, thing. And then we end up uh, melting down in their entire building. So we're able to kind of get behind enemy lines with these tablets. And, um, and that has helped quite significantly. So, so pre-COVID, you guys, your interactions were physically in, fr in front of each of the patients? Absolutely, okay. yeah. Um, we would drive out to their home or drive out to the assisted living facility and, uh, and, and, and be right then, right there with them, you know, face-to-face -face with them. And, and is it now 100% virtual? No, I'd say, I'd say about 50-50 at this point. Um, but, but we're able to do things that we could never do before. Um, you know, at, at eight o'clock at night, if our patient's having, you know, some kind of an issue, um, you know, the assisted living facility coordinator or nurse or the, the patient's daughter or the patient themselves, if they're able to operate the, the tablet. And in most cases, in the independent facilities and in, in the residential homes, they're able to do that. Um, you know, we're able to reach out to them at eight, nine o'clock at night and really kind of, they kind of have a virtual urgent care in their back pocket pretty much all day, every day now, which is pretty awesome. So. Yeah. You know, so this, this transition from, you know, really kind of physical interactions and your, and your job being physically in front of your, of your customers, your patients, uh, to, you know, at least a big portion of it being virtual. You know, there's a version of that that I think a lot of businesses are going, like at least contemplating right now or attempting to go through. As you guys have done it, what, it, what have been some of the things that have made that transition successful for you that, you know, that could be good advice to other businesses that are considering it? 
I, for us, it's been it's been understanding our consumer, understanding what their limitations are, and then meeting them halfway or or all the way in in you know when we need to you know um and and you know getting the device to them um uh making it so that it's a it's a you know it it's it's very difficult to to not be able to operate it um you know those kinds of things those are those are those are those are, those were our primary challenges um trying to morph into a company that's doing inventory management and things along those lines with different devices and our remote monitoring blood pressure cuffs and our remote monitoring scales and things along those lines. It's, it's been a little bit different. And then our nurse practitioners who, who are used to being able to listen, you know, to somebody's lungs with a stethoscope, um, having to, having to tinker with our chart notes to support, uh, you know, visual observations as opposed to, uh, you know, using our ears, you know, um, so, and really, really becoming a company that's able to coordinate care across all the other resources that are out there, the home health care companies, um, the medical equipment companies, the um, medical, the, the mobile diagnostic companies, being able to, to, to really coordinate that care is, is really what we've really become accustomed to doing, um, as opposed to delivering it ourselves in a lot of the cases. Yeah. So as you, got, as you guys have gone through this change, what what's the feedback from your patients been and as well as from your employees because this is a big change for both of them and and how, how they handled it and and you know what 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 would they say about it right now uh yeah it's been a huge change and it was honestly it was pretty terrifying because <laughs> um, i didn't know it was it was the only way that we could get to these folks and 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 take care of them and i i didn't know what what it would end up uh what what the outcome would be if they would like it um, if, if my nurse practitioners, if they would like it, um, uh, but overall the, uh, the feedback has been not just good. It has been incredibly good. Um, uh, the, the elderly have done very, very well with these devices. They're able to use them. The nurse practitioners are, are really able to get through their, their visits and, and diagnose and treat, uh, more patients, uh, during a, and during the span of a, of a single day without, nearly as much in terms of distractions, um, you know, uh, traffic and things on those lines that they don't have to deal with anymore. Um, they're able to, they're able to hang out at home and take care of their kids while they are, um, providing medical care, which is great for family balance. Um, so, so overall it's really, really made us much more powerful in our ability to deliver quality care. Um, and, and because, and I think, and I think our consumers realize that I think they see that your your customers you know you mentioned this is this is a group of people that you know may not have in their personal lives adopted some of this technology like how, how have you how have you helped them make that transition so that this you know to make this whole process so successful yeah uh i mean some of our I, i'll tell you some of our patients were around during the last pandemic in 1918 you know so um uh they, they've been around for a while and, and a lot of them have never ever interacted with you know a cell phone or things like that um uh and they've got other people who manage those things for them and some of the memory care units and uses the living facilities so um interacting with their families and and whatnot has has made that a little bit easier having you know family support they're able to go in and 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 help mom with the tablet until she's able to kind of get an idea how to use it um uh, really, we haven't we haven't we haven't set it up so that they are contacting us using any of these devices. They're still contacting us to report their issue with with a phone, um, and then we dial in, and all they have to do is answer the thing. Um, so that way, we can do a video encounter because that's what we need to be able to do to be able to build our insurance. So, has it has it changed at all the way that you go and find new patients? Like, have, have has it? Uh, helps or hurt the way that you go and acquire new patients into your service? It's, it seems that a hundred percent, everything, it's everything, like I said, everything's different now. Um, uh, I mean, a day is like a month, you know, in terms of everything changing, how fast, how fast everything's changing in medicine, particularly surrounding this whole COVID uh, crisis. The, um, so yeah, it's, it's changed a lot in terms of how we market. Um, you know, we're marketing, we're marketing accessibility to care and availability to care now, as opposed to, um, you know, the, the smiley face that, that somebody's going to have 
the bubbly personality when they when when somebody pulls into your driveway um, with a stethoscope on. So um, so now we're really marketing to the assisted living facilities themselves, and then to um, home health care companies, uh, you know, skilled care nursing companies. They they provide some of the you know the private duty companies. You know, we're marketing directly to them to 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 show them how we can help their business by keeping folks out of the hospital, you know, their clients out of the hospital and what that does for them and their businesses. So, um, so it's, it's become our, our, our customer has really become the, the, the other businesses that are entrusted with these folks lives while our consumer has become the patient. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's, it's made things a little bit different, um, in a good way. Yeah. Has it, has it caused you at all to think differently or, or start acting differently in terms of, um, where you provide services? Because I imagine in your you know, pre-COVID model, uh, where you're physically going out and, and meeting with patients, you know, it, it, you were a little bit probably uh, geographically bound by, based on how far your providers could go out. Like, can, can you think differently now about where, where you do business because of this? Uh, we, yeah, like it, it, incredibly. I mean, we can do, we're, we're talking about uh, taking on some patients out in Colorado. Um, we're talking about Texas. Um, I'm no longer, uh, we no longer have to really factor in so much the geography in terms of, of which provider we assign to which patient, not, not nearly as much anymore anyway. Um, you know, it used to be that we would need, I don't know, maybe 10 providers to just kind of sprinkled in certain locations throughout Michigan. Um, rather than hiring the best provider, maybe I would need to hire the best provider in a particular area. Um, Whereas now I can just hire the, the best of the best um, and, um, and, and, and they can provide care from anywhere to anywhere. So um, yeah, that's been a huge difference. It's really the, the, the secret sauce in doing house calls really was, you know, how do you manage the logistics of, of geography? Um, and no longer do we have to do that at all. So Yeah. It's, not, it's also interesting to think about if you're, if you're physically putting tablets and connectivity into the hands of these patients, you know, what, what other services could you potentially provide to them? You know, especially a group of people that sometimes can feel a little bit isolated. Be really, I don't know if you've, if you've thought about that at all, but I'd be really interested to, you know, hear about other services that you could provide. Uh, I'll tell you, we've got, uh, we have, on every one of our tablets, we've got um, connections to the Michigan Health Exchange. So these patients are able to get, and their family members are able to get access to their, their healthcare records um, uh, all over, you know, from anywhere. Um, and, uh, and, and they're able to do that with these tablets, um, right? It, it becomes a portal. Uh, these patients are able to get, we're, we're, we're figuring that at some point in time, we'll be hooking up with specialists. So we'll be able to have a cardiologist on staff, a pulmonologist, an endocrinologist, and, and have them available to consult, um, you know, and we would have the, the, the daughter, the patient, our provider, and whoever's consulting all on the same phone call. Um, we have uh, apps that we're looking into right now for wound care, where somebody could take a picture of their wound and it would beam over to us. Um, uh, and, and the wound care supplies would be ordered like automatically through it, which is pretty incredible. Um, our remote monitoring devices, so our blood pressure cuffs, our scales, they are, they're taking those readings and then sending those readings to the device. The device then beams them up to us through the cloud. Um, physical therapy, we're uh, looking into providing physical therapy telephonically. So it's, it's pretty incredible what's out there. Um, pill reminders, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, we haven't even scratched the surface yet on what we're able to do with these things. Yeah. I mean, do, do you think that, COVID almost acted as a forcing function to push you in, the, in, this, in this industry, like where it would have gone uh, eventually just over a shorter period of time? Um, you know, even in, it was back in uh, the end of October 2019, there was an act that I think it was the Connect with Care Act was sailing through Congress. It was, I believe it was unanimously voted, uh, voted up in the House um, and then uh, ran into some congressional budget issue in the Senate, um, but but outside of that, it would have gone through, and that would have enabled telehealth technology. Um, it would have it would have opened the door to that, just like what we have right now. Um, once uh, once the COVID crisis hit, it 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 gave them no excuse, no reason to not just let that out of the box. And 
Um, and, and, you know, so we've been on X. We haven't been able to bill it out really until, until now. Um, but we've been dabbling in it for about a year and a half, really getting, trying to kind of tinker with it, get used to it. And that way, when, when, at which point in time Congress green lighted it, we'd be able to deploy it and hopefully at that point be well ahead of competition. Um, and then this, and then this all hit and, and I would say it probably fast forwarded, um, this kind of technology by at least at least a couple of years. Um, you know, any lobbyists that were out there trying to slow it down, you know, they were they were moved aside and 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 now it's full bore telephonics and medicine. So well, I'm I can't I'm sure your patients are extraordinarily happy for that, um, especially especially in this environment. When when you think about uh, you know eventually uh like hopefully cross your fingers we'll be out of this COVID world um and we'll be back to some some new normal. And when you think when you think about what's what's happened over these last weeks and months, uh, as your business has evolved and changed, and you're, you're serving your customers and patients in a different way, how does it change your business in the future? Like, the, is is there? Do you guys go back to what you're doing before? What's your new normal? Um, you know, I think we're going to find out what our new normal is when when new normal happens. But um, you know, we're we're kind of thinking about that a little bit. Um, you know, we don't want to be a fully telephonic company, but we don't, but we want to be able to utilize the, uh, the, you know, the tools that we now have available to us that we never had before. So probably what we're thinking about is, is we'll end up having on-site visits, um, you know, maybe every few months and then, you know, augment those with, typically we see patients monthly and then also whenever they have problems in between those monthly visits. So maybe every few months we'll, we'll do the on-site thing and then, and then telephonic visits in between, um, you know, uh, which will be which will be great. You know, our NPs will be able to see more patients in less time and provide a higher level of care and hopefully reduce hospitalizations across the board, which I think is what we're going to find here. But I think that our new normal is going to be. I, I think we're we're playing in our new normal right now, um, and and I don't think this this genie in terms of medicine is never going back in the bottle ever. Yeah. yeah. Well. In this case, it sounds like that's a good thing because um, it sounds like the level of care that you're able to provide uh, is is far better than you know what anybody was able to do before. So, um, thank you, J Jim. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You know, I think what thank you, Mike. you, what you and your company are doing are just are just so incredible, and it's having such a big impact. Uh, I know to the you know 1,300 patients that you're serving today, future patients that you're going to bring on, and in these communities, and to the families as well, because I know all of us as COVID hit, you know, one of the first areas that we all think about are elderly relatives and are they yeah. safe and are they being taken care of? So thank you so much for what you're, what you and your company are sure. doing with that. Um, you know, I think whether it's COVID-19 or not, uh, what the work that you're doing is, is really, really important. So thank, thank you so much. Um, and for Absolutely. everybody out there listening, you know, one, one thing that I really would, would love ever to encourage with everybody is find ways to support your small businesses in your community. Uh, they are the lifeblood of our economy. They're the backbone of our communities. Please find a way, go out of your way to support them. Um, thank you very much. And T-Mobile for Business, uh, you have our commitment that we'll continue to do the same uh, through great content and great support programs for, for our small businesses. So thank you, Jim. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, keep doing great work. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And we appreciate all the support we've gotten from T-Mobile. It's been, the, the customer service has been nothing but outstanding um and and uh our, our our marketing rep has really empowered us and made us able to scale um i mean he's he's practically become a part of our company um and uh i mean it's just been i, I couldn't i we, we couldn't have done it without without team well really we wouldn't have been able to do it yeah it's been well, thank great. you we we couldn't do it without incredible customers like you and so th thank you again for all the work that you're doing absolutely